this short video, we're going to look at the key component parts of our super insulated masonry solution, Sims by Manock. The solution has two key component parts. On the inside here, we have a Manock aircrete block, and outside then of that, we have an external insulation system. So uh, we'll first look at the uh, masonry substrate and uh, the benefits of using manic aircrete blocks in that application. So essentially the block, uh, the manic aircrete block, this is a 7.5 Newton block, so it's, it's uh, structurally adequate for use uh, in, in Ireland. Um, there's three uh, key benefits of using a uh, manic aircrete block as the masonry substrate in this type of wall buildup. Uh, first of all, uh, speed of build and uh, labour costs. As you can see there, the block is 9 inches wide by 9 inches high. So it's essentially the same size as building two 4 inch dense blocks on the flat. And when we do see often on site uh, people opting for this type of wall solution, we do see them building uh, two 4 inch dense blocks on the flat. So here we're essentially uh, saving, we're building uh, uh, the, the wall or the masonry substrate in, substrate in half the time as we would uh, if building two four inch in the flat. And the other option for, for dense concrete blocks, I suppose, is your traditional cavity wall construction. Again, that's a four inch block side by side. So by using our nine inches wide by nine inches high uh, aircrete block here, we're uh, cutting the, the uh, labour costs in half and we're cutting the, the time, construction time in half as well. So that's a major benefit on any construction site. The second uh, key benefit of using uh, manic aircrete blocks in, in uh, this application is the manic aircrete block is a thermal block. It's almost 10 times more thermally efficient than a dense concrete block. So that will uh, improve the overall U value of your wall and reduce the heat loss from your building uh, quite significantly. So that's again the second key benefit of using the aircrete block in this location. <coughs> And the third benefit then is uh, the thermal bridging. By, by building the masonry substrate using a thermal, thermally efficient product, then you're essentially addressing all your thermal bridges uh, almost by default. So all, all the, the heat loss at your junctions is uh, taken care of by this uh, thermally efficient aircrete block. So in terms of building the manic aircrete blocks, um, we have two options. In this wee sample here, we have shown, or we have built it using traditional uh, sand and cement mortar. Um, very good option is uh, the type of uh, mortar that most block layers in Ireland, with are, are, are in Ireland are familiar with and uh, happy to use. And it works very well. Uh, the other option then is a thin joint mortar system. Um, so the blocks is laid in a thin layer mortar, it's, it's uh, more like a tile adhesive than a sand cement mortar and uh, if, if the block layer gets used to that it brings, uh, it brings a number of benefits to the wall. It's a stronger mortar than traditional sand and cement, it's uh, roughly about 10 newton in uh, strength. It sets a lot quicker than uh, traditional sand and cement. Um, which uh, can increase uh, speed on site, again, if the block layer is used to it. Um, and because it's a lot stronger, uh, there is the option of um, reducing the thickness of the aircrete block from nine inches, maybe back to six inches, but that's something that you'd have to discuss with uh, your structural engineer. We have had some uh, analysis carried out on uh, our aircrete blocks uh, built with a thin joint mortar and compared that against a traditional uh, 350 wide uh, cavity wall construction. And essentially our 7.5 Newton aircrete block um, at 9 inches wide built with thin joint mortar is almost three times stronger than your uh, traditional cavity wall construction. So um, there is scope there for um, reducing the overall thickness of your masonry substrate when, when using a uh, thin joint mortar. So again, that will uh, save some uh, construction costs or the cost of material um, for the build. So the second key component part of our um, 
Sims by Manock is uh, the external insulation system, which is applied to the outside of, of the aircrete, the masonry substrate. And essentially, that's um, made up of uh, two parts. So you have your insulation. So uh, in this particular sample, we have a 140 millimeter wide um, Manock EPS pearl insulation. And in conjunction with the accrete block, that gives an overall U value through the wall of 0.18. Um, one of the benefits of this solution is you're not restricted by the thickness of the insulation. Often in the cavity wall construction, you're limited, uh, your insulation thickness is limited uh, by the, the width of the cavity in the wall. Here, you're not limited. So if you um, want to improve the U value, you can quite easily increase the thickness of the insulation out to uh, 180, 200, or whatever's required to meet uh, the U value, the target U value that you're looking for. So, as I say, in this sample, uh, we have 140ml Manock EPS Pearl achieving 0.18 U-value. And then the second part of the external wall insulation uh, system is the render. And the render is applied, the render system is applied directly to the insulation. Um, Traditionally, I suppose, we had, uh, in, 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 in cavity wall constructions, we had a, a block inner leaf and we had a block outer leaf and we had a cavity with insulation in it. Um, advancements in material technology has meant here that we have effectively done away with the block on the outside and replaced it with this uh, render system. So uh, this render, um, Build up is doing essentially the same as what, what your external block was doing. It's protecting the wall from uh, the weather and from the elements. Um, so that's essentially the, the, the second key component part of, of the solution. And uh, if we look now in more detail at the, the render part of the system and how it's applied. So in terms of uh, putting this solution together, the first um, process is to, to build the masonry uh, substrate uh, or, or the manic aircrete blocks. Once, that's, um, once the masonry substrate has been built, uh, the roof has to go on and the windows have to be installed. Um, the installation of the window is very important and the location of the window in relation to the aircrete block is very important. The further out that the window is in relation to the aircrete block, the better the say value of the junction, and so, so the uh, less heat loss you'll, you'll have through thermal bridging. In this particular sample, um, the window frame is 70 millimetres wide and uh, 40 mil is supported on the aircrete block and 30 mil hangs out across the block. Um, so essentially a 40 mil of the insulation or the window uh, is supported on the aircrete block. Um, it's also an option to uh, have the window entirely outside the block um, supported on an aluminium bracket. So uh, essentially the, the inside face of the window frame will be out here and the block will be supported on the bracket. And again, that will improve the thermal performance of that junction. So uh, another important consideration um, is the type of windowsill uh, you choose. Um, in this particular example, we have uh, chose to show this uh, passive sill. It's manufactured in Cork. And essentially, it's a high-density polystyrene insulation coated with a tough resin, which uh, gives it uh, a nice aesthetic finish and uh, plus it's very durable. Um, because this sill is insulated, um, it gives a very good say value across this junction and um, the junction performs uh, very, very well from a thermal bridging point of view. Um, as you can see here, the upstand on the sill sits up nicely behind the drip on the window 
which uh, gives a very good well-done detail at this location. The alternative to the passive sill when uh, using this particular solution is uh, an aluminium type sill, a folded aluminium sill. And these, uh, these can be provided by um, usually the window uh, manufacturer. And again, so it's, it's a nice uh, sill and a nice option for this particular solution. So once all our windows and doors are installed and we have fixed our um, window sills, um, the next stage then is start starting to fix the actual insulation onto uh, the block walk. Um, just prior to that, um, we fix this aluminium starter track um, back into the block, um, and that gives a good base to um, start your insulation on. So you fix your track back into the block walk, usually at plinth level, and then that gives a nice level substrate to uh, start fixing your insulation with uh, on. So once our uh, starter track is installed, um, we can then continue to fix the insulation uh, to the aircrete blocks. Um, typically they're fixed using um, a thermally broken uh, type fixing, uh, such as this one. And there's a number of those, a specific number of those to be uh, fixed per square metre. So they're essentially drilled and fixed uh, back through the insulation into the masonry uh, or the aircrete substrate. Um, alternatively, you can uh, stick the insulation to the block walk using a, an adhesive, a special adhesive. It comes in a 25 kg bag. Um, and you just add water and mix it up. Apply it to the back of the insulation board and then um, place the board again the aircrete block and uh, plumb it to, and keep it nice and straight. Um, and in some instances when you use the adhesive um, you don't actually uh, need the um, mechanical fixing at all. It just depends on the system and the system provider. provider. So. Um, it's, it's, it's probably a speedier option to use the adhesive and uh, maybe more cost effective as well. So those are your two fixing options, your mechanical fixing uh, your or your adhesive. So once we have our uh, insulation boards all fixed back to the substrate um, and uh, they all have to be nicely rasped down level with all the joints filled with expanded foam. The next process then is to start to play uh, the beading. Um, and the first one then is uh, there has to be a bead applied to the starter track. So essentially it's just a bead like that there and it uh, clips onto the face of the track like so. So that gives a nice then straight line to finish your render system. Uh, down to. So the next uh, bead that has to be installed is your seal bead around your windows and doors um, and this bead uh, prevents water ingress uh, at that junction around your window frames. So essentially this is what your seal bead looks like. We've already stuck it onto the window frame here just to, just to show it in place but uh, essentially it comes with like a tape on, on the back of it which is peeled off and then the bead is uh, stuck on to the window frame and that gives a nice, nice clean finish and a good seal um, at that junction. So you go around all your windows and doors then with your seal bead and after that then um, you come along then with your corner bead and this goes up, up all your, the corners of your walls and plus around all your reveals uh, like so. So it overlaps with your, with your uh, uh, seal bead um, and all those beads then they're put in place with a, with a base coat material which we'll talk about now later on. So once our uh, beading is all in place we have our corner beads on and our seal beads and the bead around the plinth um, then it's time to start to play an actual um, render system to, to the main part of the wall. Uh, the first uh, process is to apply a base coat material uh, which goes straddled directly onto the insulation um, and, and leveled off. And into that base coat material then 
there's a reinforcing mesh applied uh, and it's bedded into the, the base coat and this mesh um, makes the, the render, gives it its strength um, and makes it strong enough to take some impact. So uh, we have our uh, insulation entirely covered in the base coat and the mesh comes in a roll and it's rolled out then and uh, bed it nicely into the base coat and uh, leveled out with a trowel. Some applicators then will put another tight uh, base coat across that, um, uh, but uh, it's also an option to do it all in one application. So when applying the mesh, there's a number of locations uh, which are called stress points. Um, one such location here is at, at the at the, just at the corner of the windowsill, um, basically around openings uh, where you have maybe higher stress locations due to the opening. And at those locations, um, we put in what's called a patch. So it's, it's essentially a square of the reinforcing mesh um, and it's just bedded into the base coat at 45 degrees um, at those stress locations. So you'd be putting that um, for those around each of your openings. So once the base coat is in place um, with the reinforcing mesh bedded in it and uh, finished off, it has to be finished off uh, nice and smooth to give a very smooth substrate for uh, the final layer. Um, the base coat <coughs> excuse me, is allowed then to uh, dry before coming along and applying the final render coat. Uh, there's a number of options for the render coat. In this particular sample we've used uh, an acrylic. Uh, with a nice fine uh, sand in it. Um, you can also, the silicone renders available and monocruise renders. Um, so there's a range of different different uh, products available there. There's also uh, renders with, with, with a, a, a larger chip to give a, a dashed uh, appearance. And there are also some systems which you can actually apply a, a, a dry dash. So, so there's a range of products available there. Um, the render finish um, with acrylic in this instance is uh, just simply applied a uh, very thin coat over the base coat. It's either spray applied or applied with a trowel. Um, so it's applied on and then uh, finished with, with a nylon or a plastic type float to give a nice even um, uh, finish which, which, is, which is nice to look at and uh, most importantly it's uh, very very waterproof. So that then is your finished uh, your finished uh, product.